weeks ago, Pink released her latest album, Beautiful Trauma, which also happens to be the first song on the album. Ever since I was a kid, I love Pink. She's just the type of pop star that got us from the very first word of every song she wrote. Or sang, because she didn't write every song, but that's not the point. She's not a fake character, if you know what I mean. Every song she wrote was about her personal life, and she does whatever she wants when she wants. So when I heard that she has been writing music again, I thought I was going to have some dope times once again. Did she knock another one out of the park? Let's find out. I didn't expect anything less from Pink by starting off with something so strong instrumentally and concept-wise, especially like Beautiful Trauma. But at the same time, it makes me wonder about Pink's sanity. She talks about slashing her husband's tires and he punched a hole in the wall, but she framed it and dated it as if it was an accomplishment. Then again, they did reconcile and go through marriage counseling, so everything's fine now, according to her. This song is Pink's way of saying that life does suck and things are hard. Nothing is perfect. But the other half is all the beautiful and perfect things. And that's what the album is going to be about. I was about to ask if all of her albums were like this, but then again, when I went back to every single album Pink did, I'm never going to ask that question again. Then there's Revenge. A rap song featuring who is considered to be rap god, what could possibly go wrong? We don't really know Pink for being much of a revenge type person because considering what she has going for her, she doesn't need to plot a revenge for anybody. So when you're going to work on a song that doesn't really describe you, you might as well turn it into a joke. And Pink can really pull that off. What makes it all the better is that Pink is really good at rapping. Though it's not the type of rap that you're used to hearing on the radio, it's good enough to make this song more comedic because we can hear her sarcasm as always. And then, when Eminem comes into the song, I'll be honest, at first I did not think it was Eminem, but then after listening to it further, yeah, there's no questioning it. But knowing him, he can pretty much play any character and make it work. Considering how this is supposed to be funny, yeah, he knows how to play with the words to fit the verses as well. Whatever You Want is a beautiful song, but I felt like I've heard it a couple times already from this artist. Not like it's a bad thing, it's just that I'm kinda used to hearing these types of songs and I kinda wasn't interested in hearing another one. I mean, Pink is good as always and I don't mind it. Just not exactly the most interesting. You already know my opinions if you've seen the review already. And now here's a sad breakup song called But We Lost It. And when it comes to breakup songs, Pink goes two different ways. She can either be the bitch who got her heart broken and she really doesn't want to see the guy's face or else she'll punch it. Or she can be one of those who writes songs for the piano who actually go deeper into how love operates when it hurts, but it's not sappy in the slightest. This song just proves how beautiful Pink's voice is when she really wants to show it, and it shows how perfect of a songwriter she is. But We Lost It is a wonderful listen to, especially when it comes to breakup songs. Then you have Barbies. Now this is the point in the album where Pink is deciding to sing about how life as an adult is aggravating to the point that she wishes she can go back to her childhood, which was a simpler time, because she didn't have to worry about grown-up problems. Gee, I wonder where I've heard that from. She wrote a similar song for her last album called Good Old Days, but this song is more somber while the other song brings her past to her present in a somewhat good light. This one lets you feel that Pink sometimes misses the earlier times, which is why she keeps referencing it. We all do. And that's the new point that Pink is bringing to the table, especially when it comes to the overall theme, Beautiful Trauma. Where We Go. Out of all the songs on this album, I think this is the song that 
might not be the best. It's not a bad song, like not bad at all, because it's about how you just got out of a broken relationship when it can't be fixed. It sounds like Pink wrote it, and I wouldn't deny her for a second. I just feel like I could have seen more Pink come out with some strong vocals. There are not that many this time around, and it makes me sad as a listener of pop music not to get those strong vocals from her. Then again, this is one of her album songs, not really much of her singles, so I should not complain as much, but I digress. With the song for now, you can tell that this was not written by Pink, or at least she didn't get her hands all over it. And I know I've been saying this a lot, but it's not a bad thing because artists do this all the time. And unlike the other song I just talked about, her voice is actually excellent and she puts her heart into the lyrics. For some odd reason, I just feel like she wasn't as close to this song as some of the other ones already mentioned on this album. However, if there's a favorite part I do have, it's the chorus. Pink always knocks her choruses out of the ballpark. And if I can listen to that part on repeat, I would. The problem of it kind of being too obvious still rubs me the wrong way a little, but not too much to the point that I'll disregard the song completely. Not only is Secrets catchy, but it proves a point about keeping secrets in a relationship. It's one of those obstacles that the couple has to climb if they are ready to let out all of their dirty laundry onto the balcony. Let's be honest with ourselves. Not everybody reveals their dirtiest secrets, but Pink is making a point by saying that if it's gotta come out at some point, it's gotta come out, and that's the challenge. Beautiful trauma still in the theme here. Who else has questioned about their significant other thinking that they deserve something better than the relationship they have now? If some of y'all said no, you're either A, very confident in your relationship, which is good by the way, or you're lying. I kind of don't get why this is kind of catchy, but if Pink sounds convincing, it's still a pretty good song in my opinion. With I Am Here, it's this... This is the point in the album where Pink fits the song where the positive is at its utmost high. She is ready to start over with whatever garbage that she's been through, and she is ready to welcome people into her circle. When she says that she's here, She's here, and she makes a point. Like, if you can just announce yourself with your voice without saying the words, it's pretty obvious. This makes this song one of my all-time favorites from her so far, and I am in love with it. Wild hearts can't be broken. Well, Pink is a wild heart, and she hasn't been broken yet. She's a strong human, probably stronger than the rest of us, if you know what I mean. So it doesn't surprise me that she has a song like this on her album. I mean, have you looked at her past work? I mean, it still goes back to the beautiful trauma theme, as I've mentioned a couple times already, which is a good thing. And again, she doesn't have to curse or do anything surprising to get across to her point. What's surprising enough is that she doesn't go to the usual swearing tactic. She can use any language she wants in her lyrics, and just as long as she means them, her messages still come across the same. This is my fi second favorite song, no doubt about it. With You Can Get My Love, this is a beautiful song to conclude on considering what type of album Beautiful Trauma has become. This is the way Pink is trying to say that despite all the bad things that we might go through or that come at us, or all the bad things about a person's self, the one thing they will never fail at is giving the person that they care about all the love that they can give. That's what true love is about, and that's what's beautiful about what the trauma and the flaws that come with it. As long as there's that true love that is not going to be tainted by something, well, completely horrible that might as well destroy everything, that's where the beauty is. And I did not know whether to include White Rabbit on this album review or not, because it was kind of weird, especially considering what type of album this is. 
And plus, didn't Pink already write a song for an Alice in Wonderland movie? But then I kind of got an idea. Pink is telling the Alice in Wonderland tale, but she's telling it in a way that's supposed to be giving advice and not exactly rehashing the story like most pop songs or bonus tracks on pop albums I've been doing. If people are lost like Alice was, you can find some help to get your way back home. And, of course, Alice did that. I guess it makes some sense. And, I ho and I'm hopefully right when I'm getting to the point of this. Because, yeah, this I think this was a bonus track song, and some of them make it onto the album just fine, and others just kind of make it weird. So going over this album, I would rate it a 9 out of 10. There might be a song that was just okay, or we've heard it time and time again, but with different song titles. But overall, Pink has definitely made this work. She knows how to make it work. Pink is a type of artist that she's not going to die out because people are going to try to force her to incorporate some stereotypical pop song elements, but then she refuses to. Actually, it wouldn't surprise me if she keeps making albums until she's old as Tony Bennett, especially since he's been doing songs with Lady Gaga. So that's it for this review. If you liked that, make sure to subscribe and check out some more videos I have on my channel. My social media is in the description box below if you guys are interested in following me. And make sure to give this video a like if you can. I'm Kate Sharon, it's been real. Ciao!